Uh, hello again. Uh, am I audible at the back? Nice. So my name is Deepak, and today uh, I'm going to talk about uh, tester's dilemma. So I'm an engineering manager with 17 years of experience, most of which has been uh, being a tester and managing the testing team. I spent around 12 years in Red Hat, and uh, why I'm taking so much time in introduction slide is because in the broader context of this talk, uh, working as a tester and managing testers led me to believe that there was something wrong with us as a group where we, <laughs> where we uh, always considered uh, individual benefit over uh, communal benefit. So I'm also very famous on my LinkedIn for tech humor. Uh, I don't do much of that in our internal Slack, but uh, that's only for the good. All right, so what I'm going to talk about today is there is a game theory concept called prisoner's dilemma. As some of you might know it. And then uh, I'm going to tell five ways in which this concept uh, manifests in our lives as testers and then uh, there are two ways of not fixing it completely, but at least some remedy. Uh, one is the environment, which your managers and leaders can help you. The second is uh, by yourself. And then uh, I'll leave some time at the end for Q&A. All right, so, so prisoner's dilemma, as I said, uh, is a game theory concept uh, which talks about, again, the choice that people have to make when thinking about individual benefit versus benefit of the, collective benefit of the group. Uh, think about this scenario where there are two thieves. Uh, let's call them Jack and Victor, based on my favorite show. Uh, no living resemblance to any other Jack or Victor present here. <laughs> so. They are caught by the police, uh, held up in different cells, so that they cannot communicate with each other. And then uh, they are asked either to uh, accept that they stole whatever they stole, or lay the blame on the other thief. And, or what they can do is keep quiet and don't say anything to police. I have seen Hollywood movies, there is a term for this. So, <laughs> I'm not unaware of that. And then, uh, now think about this truth table. Uh, not exactly a truth table, but some kind of uh, Boolean table. So both Jack and Victor have options. So if they cooperate, cooperate in this sense means cooperate between themselves, not with the law authorities, right? So if Jack, who is in blue cooperates with Victor, who is in orange, they'll keep quiet and not tell police anything. In that case, uh, because they were caught stealing, uh, they'll get one year each, which is still a good enough result for both of them, right? They can start their uh, new lives after one year, probably study inside the jail. Uh, but if you look at uh, Jack and Victor, they, their friendship is not uh, bonded on something very meaningful. They were not friends before becoming thieves. Their, their bond is over easy money, which is stealing, right? So it's not a good bond to have with your friends. So when Jack or Victor have to make this decision, should I keep quiet? In the back of their head, they also have a thought that what if I keep quiet and Victor spills the beans? In that case, let's say if Jack keeps quiet and Victor becomes the approver for law enforcement agencies, then Victor gets free and Jack gets 10 years, right? And similarly, if uh, Jack lays the blame on Victor, he goes free and uh, Victor gets 10 years. And if both of them lay the blame on each other, both get five years. So in their best interest, 
the best thing for them to do is keep quiet. But since they cannot talk to each other, they have a decision to make, which is unfortunately a very common decision that all of us testers make in our daily lives while testing software. And as I said, their bonding is not on, uh, it's not a bond of blood, it's not a bond of some common love for, uh, let's say, uh, Western movies. It is based on making easy money, which is not a virtue, right? So when your bond is such, you, you are likely to possibly ditch your thief friend. All right, so what we have to believe now is uh, individual interests, which are very apparent in this case, can conflict with team interests. And that happens very commonly uh, in a day-to-day -day life. Now I have written, uh, as I said, I, I was a tester myself. I managed a team of testers in Red Hat uh, for good seven years. Uh, and I also did uh, LinkedIn surveys before arriving on this country because I always felt there was something amiss and I just had to uh, put my finger on it, what was it? And then I realized, oh, there is a name for it. It's called prisoner's dilemma. So how does it manifest in our lives as testers? The first thing is called individual versus collective benefit. Think about a scenario. Uh, I'm a tester, I am continuously, we are using Kanban, I'm continuously picking up the tasks which are in the nature of how to test versus what to test, right? So they might be uh, tasks about infrastructure, like uh, me writing a new pipeline for our test case. I'm not saying that's not important, but someone regularly picking up infrastructure related tasks is a clear cut red flag that that person is working just for his own benefit and not for the benefit of the team. When we test software, the goal is to increase coverage and not let our team get embarrassed in front of customers or while doing a demo even. So uh, what to test is priority number one. You should test almost everything that you think the users could use instead of thinking about how to test. Maybe I should a new tool which is, uh, which is very hyped up in the market right now. And the second thing is uh, short term gain versus long term consequences. And uh, the very common example is my build broke, which was let's say a test suite of regression tests. And uh, I saw that most of those Selenium tests were due to, uh, due to timeouts. So what I do now is, because I don't have uh, a long-term motivation with this project, so what I'll do to fix that is add thread.sleep everywhere. So what I'll do is add a very short-term fix and make the entire test suite uh, unmaintainable in the long run which is again a red flag for uh, individual benefit. And third thing is collaboration and trust within an organization. So there are organizations, I mean almost most of them, where the teams are organized based on skill. QE gets their own team reporting up to, let's say a VP. DevOps gets their own team. UX gets their own team. So. I, I usually uh, used to give the example of uh, old military where there was artillery, cavalry, and soldiers on foot, and possibly engineers. Let's say I need to cross a bridge, they'll build a bridge for the army to cross. And the uh, commander of infantry would be an infantry person, not the cavalry person, stuff like that. But what happens in such cases is if your incentives and benefits are coming from your mothership, which is let's say a VP of QE, you are more likely to pick up the tasks which increase those benefits. Instead of picking up tasks 
which are beneficial for the product I am testing, right? And then there is external competition and market pressure. So if I am working uh, in a project where I am using uh, some, pro uh, some proprietary tool or some open source tool which is doing the job for me, but it's not the most sought after thing in the job market for testers right now. So at first chance of, let's say, we are starting a new module, a new front end application, a single page application where there is a possibility, slightest possibility of picking up a new tool for testing. I'll go ahead and pick up a tool which is the most sought after tool in the market. Instead of, instead of picking up which we already had working and running for so many years. And why is that? Because uh, doing that strategic thinking for yourself, for your own benefit, is a clear cut sign of that you succumb to the prisoner's dilemma. And then there is internal competition. As I said, if you are a team of let's say five testers working in a product and uh, uh, there is a ton of tasks in, in Trello or Jira that your team has to pick, some of you might pick the tasks which, which make you more visible, even though they are not, uh, not priority-wise uh, best tasks to pick by you. That again is, uh, is a sign of prisoner's dilemma. And now, uh, I'm sure all of you are on social media, especially uh, social media for us, which is LinkedIn. And you might have seen the trend with social media is that all the influencers right now, they promote individual rationality over collective cooperation. They want you to become the uh, brand. They want, uh, uh, they want, they want to sell you the self-help things instead of telling you to think about the whole team or the whole company or the whole product you are working on. So the social media is full with all, all that advice. And naturally, if I'm spending uh, four hours on social media every day, I also come to that advice. A not very famous manager in engineering uh, uh, wrote this quote that the goal for people managers now is to create the conditions, that ecosystem under which cooperation can develop. We have understood that there is a problem. Right? There is a problem with, uh, I can't say that it's just with the testers. I think uh, any other skill set in a software engineering team or possibly other industries. I, I cannot talk about other industries not having worked there. But uh, with my experience in software engineering for good 17, 18 years, I can, I can safely say that there is, uh, there is this uh, uh, individual benefit thing going on for so many years, and uh, the social media only reinforces it. There has to be, there has to be something which leaders can do to fix it. Okay, so this is an interesting thing. Uh, it's called prospect theory. Uh, think about uh, think about when I booked my tickets for DevCon. Uh, there were two tickets, two types of tickets, same flight. One was twelve hundred dollars. One was fifteen hundred. The three hundred dollar premium was for if at any point I want to cancel my trip, they'll refund all the money. So there was an non-deterministic loss, which I was staring at, which was if something goes wrong, I cannot, I cannot make this trip due to health reasons or anything. Uh, I should not bear the loss of the cost of the ticket. I mean, my employer should not bear that cost. And then uh, what happens in those situations is whenever there is a non-deterministic loss or a gain, people choose to uh, prefer the gain instead of the loss. For example, uh, 
think think about uh, i was told by as a tester i was told by my manager to uh, give me give me the qa effort required to uh, there is a requirements document uh, they are doing planning for let's say next two sprints uh, there are a set of features that would go out and as a qe uh, lead i have to tell them the qe effort required like all the sprint testing cycles and regression and everything maybe some non functional testing as well performance and ux so while giving the effort or estimate of myself or my team uh, what i will do is kind of overestimate my capacity and why is that if i overestimate my capacity the clear not clear the ambiguous benefit is possibly if i tell uh, tell stakeholders that i'll do this in 4 weeks then uh, the ambiguous benefit is bonus good bonus or maybe some rewards right but the ambiguous loss in this case is missing the project deadlines so guess what i will do i'll still go ahead and give those over estimated capacity uh, timelines to the stakeholder due to this prospect theory and then uh, think about think about a situation where uh, there is a test suit and i ask people to refactor it the ambiguous loss is uh, you let go of a familiar code structure the ambiguous profit is you will learn a new thing and what would people choose they'll choose to refactor regardless of the refactoring was really required or not there would be no objective emphasis laid on whether the refactoring was really required or not okay in the next two slides uh, i am going to talk about scenarios uh, in which once you have identified those red flags how can we fix it as i said there are two ways one is uh, building an ecosystem in which cooperation can thrive or the other one is you doing it individually which is the tougher part uh how should the leaders fix it from the outside you you run a team of engineers and you are tasked with fixing the prisoner's dilemma in your team what should you do uh, to fix it uh now going back to the prospect theory so every uh, ambiguous profit and an ambiguous loss has a reference point where are you measuring from why was why was let's say in in case of uh, the bonus example i gave for giving away over estimated timelines uh an ambiguous loss at what point i was measuring it from and then why was missing deadlines and and uh ambiguous loss how was i measuring it why was it ambiguous to begin with why is it missing deadlines probably treated as bad as committing a crime in a company right so that communication where missing deadlines is treated as a uh, crime and overestimating again is treated as a crime uh, is job of the leadership and that's how we reach this point that show them the bigger picture like the goal is not uh, when you are building software there is no there are no individual goals so everyone has a part to play and the goal is probably to make software uh, work for the people it is supposed to work and then everything just takes its own place the money and everything set a reference point the reference point in this case was if i was measuring uh, individual benefit in giving estimates that 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 means that someone in my team maybe uh, a manager or a director had a wrong reference point same is the case nowadays right if everyone is being told to do something with ai 
we are setting a wrong reference point in the teams. There are still teams who are who are working on the products to keep the lights running, right? They should not measure their incentives from that AI based reference point because then they'll not do well what they are doing well right now, keeping the lights on, let's say internal tools and platforms. Uh, the second thing is uh, team rewards and possibly peer rewards, peer nominated rewards uh, in place of individual rewards. Uh, employee of the month has good place in Domino's, but not in a software team. So when you call someone employee of the month for putting, let's say, 110% of their, possibly I'm believing that you could objectively measure those 110% effort. But what about someone who put 99.9% effort? How would they feel uh, someone, uh, how would they feel uh, if someone got the employee of the month and they did not? I think the uh, individual rewards are motivation killer in a team context, especially in software. And now, uh, for the last point, we'll go back to this slide. Remember how I told you that police were, police uh, held both Jack and Victor in different cells in solitary confinement. Uh, but if you see the modern software teams, even if they are working from home, it's not solitary, right? They are just stepping away from each other. So what managers have to do is encourage engineers to discuss concerns and roadblocks. So when you, when you see people, when you talk to them, you see them as a full person. That bonding thing that I said between Jack and Victor was, their common bond was making quick money. But we cannot say the same thing about two engineers, right? Maybe they bond over movies, which is a good thing. About They bond over food, anything. They bond over uh, writing code or learning a new thing, right? Or books, there are so many things to bond over. Once uh, people bond over something, there is, uh, there is some sense of trust that they build between themselves. And that erases, that erases the chance of them uh, succumbing to the prisoner's dilemma. All right. How do we fix it from the uh, inside, like at an individual level? As I said, it's very difficult. It's more like the uh, uh, more like the yoga gurus telling people to uh, fix their health uh, by practicing some inner strength. It's easier said than done. But uh, so there has to be first of all there has to be reflection on. Uh, let's say I lived as a tester for five years. In all these five years, uh, by picking up individual glory over team cooperation for possibly every strategic decision I ever made in my career, am I now successful? Uh, was was it a order of magnitude success more than if would I, if I would have picked, let's say, team cooperation? Thinking about those scenarios, because eventually whatever you do, you'll plateau at some point. So it's better to plateau with. Uh, with being a team player than uh, being a stat padder. The second thing is belief. Uh, as I said, you will plateau at some point in your career. So, belief that being a being uh, working on uh, working as a cooperative, pleasant co-worker will always be beneficial for everyone in the long run. In the long run, so there. If it is working for you in a very uh, shorter period of time, like say in one year, you made a self-interest decision and it worked for you, you got that uh, high paying job that you wanted or your CV looks better than it looked six months ago. But in the long run, it's not going to be beneficial. And the third thing is about the purpose of the software engineering job, right? So. Realization that when we work on a product or a project, uh, we have to think about the people who use it and the other people. What we miss is 
we think about the people who use it we don't think about the people who are our co-workers and building the same product with us right that's the missing point whenever we talk about user experience it's always the experience of the user who is paying or possibly in open source uh, using the software not your peers who are helping you build that software and with that uh, i'll finish and open open this talk for questions yes sir What do you mean by unconditional? I'm 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 asking people to default to cooperation. Yes, but by, by doing so, by saying we will cooperate no matter what, you're actually reverting into the trade. And that's the case with Google. Right? Yeah. 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 And why would you say that in a software context? I'm saying that you shouldn't be paying for it. I mean, if we're, if we're talking about prisoners of data, that's what No, I don't think in a software, as I said, uh, uh, when when the Olympics happened and there was this Turkish player uh, who who very nonchalantly uh, without any uh, extra gear got the silver medal, I knew that people would go to LinkedIn and now relate his success to software, which is a wrong thing to do because that's an individual sport, right? So they even though the uh, essence of the strategic decision making that test engineers in my talk uh, make on a daily basis is prisoner's dilemma, but it's it's very different. It's not, robbery is not a team sport. A robbery, you can rob a bank on your own as well, or probably steal something from someone's house or car on your own as well. So for team sports, I think it's always better in my experience to, to default to cooperation and possibly wait for betrayal. I don't think that, that will ever come, but you should default to cooperation always. Yes? So I was just asking how you would encourage things like innovation if you want to default to, well, we always use the same testing tool and that's worked for so long, so that's faster and you don't fall behind like because you don't want to use the latest and greatest, it's because you're going against the grain. Mm -hmm. All right, so I don't think innovation is a product of people sticking to uh, cooperative methods of working. So innovation happens when, uh, when there is, a, there is a diverse set of team Let's say uh, for innovation to happen, there has to be a problem in the first place, and then there has to be uh, there has to be a crunch of resources to some extent, right? And that's where people come up with some uh, uh, engineering idea to fix that problem, right? For that to happen, uh, either it is individually or as a group, uh, there has to be a set of people set of people who are on the spectrum of creative thinking, literal thinking and uh, critical thinking. And it has, and they have to work together. The creative people would generate ideas. The critical thinkers would put those ideas into education, uh, execution as fast as possible. And it has nothing to do with uh, non-cooperation and one person just thinking that uh, choosing this tool would probably help me innovate. I think we are mixing two different uh, ideas together. Am I answering that? Mm -hmm. 
any more questions? All right, thank you everyone for your time, I really appreciate it.